Because when I receive a word, somebody says, this is Chuck, I need to have a place identifying where it was given and a date. And it took me three or four days to search that down because the word that was given to me did not have a place or a date. And so I searched and searched and searched and finally after three or four days, I found out this was given on February the 12th, 2010 at Christian International, Bill Hammond's place. And here's what he said. Here's the last thing. The last thing I saw over this state is 12 intricately connected sections that were almost welded together. They look like triangular structures representing territories. And this state, Florida, is made up of 12. The Lord said there is a well. Now this is in Florida. There is a well in all 12. There is a well that has not been uncovered. So I say my heavens are now positioned over you to create a disturbance. You won't have to fear the winds and the raging waters. But you will begin to see the land be penetrated. I say there are wells of revival in this state that are in no other state. And I say I am activating from heaven this night. The breaking open of those wells. Not the uncovering of those wells, but the breaking open of those wells. I say to those in this place tonight, you have come strategically here. To be released to find the well and watch me visit that place. And watch the water that has been stored bubble to the surface. I say there will not be one move of my spirit in this place, but there will be 12 interlocking dimensions. Of the next release of the baptism of waters upon this day. I say from this state a nation will be overcome by this spiritual force. And I say when you walk into these places. What has been blocked in you. That is not producing will be unblocked. Say unblocked. 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 So there's a new strategy to unlock the resource of this state. The greater resource is my word which was in danger of being stopped for the next season. But I say to you tonight, the well of revelation now is being primed by the river of revelation from the heavens. Wow. I say from this place, I will now, I will be now sending forth from the river of revelation, the ability to unlock the entire state. Amen. I did not have a clue that until I started. When I crossed the county line to come into Taylor, all of a sudden the Spirit of God said, you have entered a well. That means in Taylor County, you now have to act different. You have to believe different. You have to pray different. Everything about you has to become different. Whenever the Lord releases a word within a region or area, are in a state, you have to begin acting upon that word and acting as if though that word has already been made, yes, yes, been made yes. true. Amen. Some of you may struggle with, but I don't. Florida is not a pastoral state. Florida is an apostolic state. Whenever you're a forerunner and you're leading the way, you are literally moving apostolically. Pastoral works among the sheep. Pastoral doesn't go anywhere. But this is a state that is an apostolic state. It has an apostolic mantle. It has a governmental foundation and divine authority. Is anybody recording this? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So it means it's apostolic. Holy Spirit has welded together the triangular structure of the, and it is the Holy Spirit in all 12. You start seeing all of them. And this is what Kina's doing. She's bringing 67 counties. Uh, Eli, when you say 67 counties, you're literally anointed to say that. Because that's what gave her the assignment. Was when you said that last year in Tallahassee. And she's, you said 67 counties and it just leaped in her like a baby. And uh, so just keep saying it. <laughs> there is a well, get this, there's a well in all 12 of these triangles. See, the Holy Spirit has formed this well. There's a well here. 
We have to begin treating this well uh, uh, as a well of revival. You don't own it. The Lord owns it. But you're here to steward it. You're here to steward it as kingdom ambassadors within the, within the earth. I'll tell you another well. It's, it's just down the road. Crawfordville, Florida. We held a conference there back in March that literally just shook the entire region of this state. It shook the state. But it's a well of revival, and I don't have time to go into that. I did talk about it. It's on my YouTube channel. When I talked about back in March, the well of revival in Crawfordville is called the Morning Fields. This well has been covered. You have to go and you have to begin thinking, what's it, what has covered it? Now, thankfully, it doesn't have a bunch of rocks in it. From the way Chuck described it, you can break it open. But it's been covered, but a disturbance is coming. A disturbance is on Perry, Florida. Yeah. The heavens are being positioned for the disturbance that will open the wells. Sometimes it takes a disturbance to shift us out. Of the normal. Let me say this again. Sometimes it takes a disturbance to shift us out of the normal. Come on, somebody. Come on. Yeah. So I give you a testimony of this. You remember when Hurricane Dorian was coming toward Florida and it just parked on the Bahamas there? Okay. And we had friends that just lost everything. Well, when it was making a beeline literally for where we live. And, and we have people, Hal and Teresa and Jan and Marianne tonight from Brevard County. Thank you guys for coming. It was making a beeline for us, Category 5. It was at that point that all the Weather Channel prophets, those who think they've heard the Lord, but they heard the Weather Channel. I will. They began prophesying the judgment of God upon Florida because they had listened to the Weather Channel. Yeah. They weren't listening to God. And so Cheryl and I at the time lived in a condo directly on the beach. And the HOA that we were in and the county were commanding mandatory evacuation. There's no choice. You couldn't just stay there if you wanted to. They were going to come get you out. And so we're, we are putting things in our car. And I come on the elevator. And as I get on the elevator, there's two ladies on here that I've never seen before. One was an older lady. One was a younger lady. They were very attractive. But I had no, there was no sexual attraction. I walked into the elevator. And the peace of God just flooded me. And the... Older lady said, are you evacuating? I said, yes, I am. I've been through one, two. I have no intentions of going through anyone. That's three of us. I'm out. The young one got this far in my face. Came right up on my face, just that close. And she looked at me and she said, Brevard is protected. And it was as if though faith rose up on the inside of me. I didn't want to evacuate then. But I had to. We went over to Davenport and I stayed a, uh, a week actually. Because, and during that time I, I put together an ecclesia of believers who had authority over hurricanes. I didn't want to have just anybody on there. You have to, when you run with me and you go to prayer stretch with me, one, you have to be healed. I don't want you manifesting on me. Amen. Two, you have to have authority to do things within the state. And so I assembled, I forget how many people, we assembled and every night we got on the phone call and we did not rebuke the hurricane, we cried mercy, 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 mercy. Mercy, mercy, mercy. And if you will go today at the track of that hurricane, you'll see it try to move off the Bahamas and it would back up. It would move and go this way and then it would back up. It was as if though something was keeping that hurricane from going where the negative pro procrastinators from going. Something yeah. was keeping it from moving. Come on. You see, there are negative prophets yeah. out there that you don't need to listen to anymore. Come on. Amen. 
They've got Florida going to hell in a handbasket, America going to hell in a handbasket. I've got news for you. I have already heard what God has planned for you. Hey, come on. Hallelujah. To do with hell. That's right. Uh, I was, I've was. i been praying for years for a million so harvest in Florida and about a year ago the Lord spoke to me and said you're praying too small and I said what do you mean he said I want you to pray 10 million Come on. Yes. and so yes. these guys have taken I've been for the, over a year now I've been proclaiming and prophesying 10 million souls yeah. in the state of Florida that's what we're decreeing and believing God for and then after this thing kept trying to come forward and then it couldn't go and then it kind of shot up the coast. We had storm surge for over two weeks. Watched it wash out the beach. It was beautiful watching it. I'm so, the storm surge. I'm so glad the winds didn't come. But then I get a text from Chuck Pierce. Who had gotten a text from a friend. And the friend said. Chuck's friend. Said what is going on in Florida. That an ecclesia in that state has such authority. That they have the uh, power to turn hurricanes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. You see, as an ecclesia, we have tremendous authority. Yeah. And it's not about our agenda. You've got to get that out of you. I got it out of me a long time ago. That, that agenda that Ken Malone had, you know, and sure will help the Lord quite a bit. <laughs> Atmosphere. One is intercessors. Taking this word right here and interceding with this word, yeah. prophesying this word, decreeing this word. It's the prophets also who are prophesying the wind of the Lord over this word. I took, I, I've taken, I can't tell you the number of times that I've taken words that Chuck has spoken, Jane Hammond has spoken, um, Cindy Jacobs has spoken, and preached those week after week after week. To activate and charge the atmosphere with that word. The prophets need to prophesy to the wind. The seers yes. need to see the angelic army has gathered in Florida and gathered around your well here. Come on. Yes. See, I, I want to bring some correction to the discerners and the, and the seers. Why is it that you're always seeing demons? Come on. Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. See, you're looking through a glass darkly is what you're doing. Yeah. There are billions more angels than there are demons. I can tell you why they're saying it because their seeing gift hasn't been redeemed yet. Because once it gets redeemed, they start seeing the way heaven sees. Heaven sees through the eyes. Listen to this. Heaven does not see through the eyes of judgment. Heaven sees through the eyes of redemption. Come on. Come on. That's how it sees. Yeah. When you decree mercy, you begin unlocking redemption in the land. When you begin pro prophesying judgment, all of a sudden you, you have a warfare going on that has to be contended with. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, I see preachers and intercessors all the time. Jezebel's in charge of my town. Well, why did you give it to her? <laughs> why did you give it to that spirit? Come on. It, and I will, Tina, thank you. <laughs> you see, we shouldn't say Jezebel is a stronghold in our city. We should be saying Jesus Christ yeah. is the principality yeah. over our region. Yeah. Because then we're establishing yeah. over a region the lordship of Jesus. Yes, sir. That was free. Yeah. Also, the apostles need to begin to govern. They need to quit having their agenda trying to be the greatest thing and building the biggest network. They need to begin governing within their state. Amen. I had one guy, one apostle come to me. He said, Apostle Ken, how many people do you have in your network? And to me, it's not an issue. It, it was the same old question years ago. How many church people in your yeah, church? How many are right. your pastor? Yeah. Your pastor? And back then, once the Lord called me to Florida, I would, I'd say... Well, there's roughly 22 million people in Florida. So that's the size of my church. And, but apostles need to begin governing these 12 regions and territories. We need to find the apostolic leaders within these territories so that they can be getting the marching orders of heaven and releasing that into their territory that God has placed in. 
Oh. It's true. It's good. It's the remnant needs to decree the opening of the well. Yeah. Kick it open. Come on. Yeah. And worship yeah. needs to break open the wells within yeah. a region and yeah. territory. Yeah. You go and begin worshiping. You don't have to play a guitar. All you need is a noise. You go out in somewhere and you just start worshiping. You know, the Bible says make a joyful racket unto the Lord. And, uh, and so you don't have to sing in tune to worship God just be by yourself. Okay? But we need worship to break open the wells. These are the things that bring the disturbance that breaks the wells open. If you ask me by sending me an email to ApostleKenMalone at gmail.com, I will send you these notes which will include the map. I won't send it to you if you come up here and give me your email address. You have to email it to me because I won't remember otherwise. But I'd love to give it to you. Chuck says in the Word, says, Do not fear the winds and the waters. Fear is the very thing that will stop you from coming into fullness of this Word. I'm, I'm asking the Lord because I had... About a 45 minute vision uh, last summer on, on my balcony, 45 minute vision of Pensacola. And God was beginning to realign Pensacola for another great awakening for revival. And I saw the angels coming into this city and I saw the angels moving people out, moving people in, rearranging atmospheres all within the city. And this went on, I saw this for 45 minutes. And about two weeks later, I was in Chicago, and I'll be there again next month. And Jane Hammond and I were in a meeting together, and I said, remind me to tell you about the vision. And so at the end of the conference, she did. And we were sitting in the Sky Club in Chicago Airport, O'Hare. And I told her the vision that I had had. And she said, just two days ago, just before I came here, I said, Pastor Young D. Cho's word was not completely fulfilled in Pensacola. She said, in the word, he talked about his phrase. So I went and I looked up the word. And as I looked up the word, he prophesied and saw a vision of revival breaking out in Pensacola. But it didn't stay there. It went from there to the Mississippi River, which is what? New Orleans. And then it turned back and went across the northern part of the state, completely consumed North Florida, all the way over to Jacksonville. And then he saw revival leave that north area, not leave, but begin moving all the way down to the Keys and turn around and come back up the eastern seaboard and then consume the entire uh, nation. Wow. Yeah. You see, that is a vision that we need to continue to prophesy into. And we don't need to fear the wind and the wave because it'll keep us from moving into, into fullness. Fear, listen to this. The words fear not or do not be afraid is mentioned 365 times in the Bible. One for every day. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, the Lord says to Joshua, Have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Psalms 118 verses 6 and 7. The Lord is for me. I will not fear what man can do to me. The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I will look with satisfaction on those who hate me. Mark chapter 4, 35 through 41. On that day when evening came, he said to them, let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took him along with them in the boat. Just as he was, the other boats were with him. And there arose a fierce gale of wind. And the waves were breaking over the boat so much that the boat was already filling up. Jesus himself was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. Crazy. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, be still. And the wind died down. And it, it became perfectly calm. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? 
They became very much afraid and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? You see, that was most likely that wind that they were experiencing was most likely a water spout. Yeah. It was most likely what it was. You see, he was saying to them, make this thing subordinate to you. I don't know why I think it's human nature. When we go through a hard time or we get caught up in a trial or go through a testing, we have a tendency to become pitiful rather than to take a call. <laughs> We have a tendency, I know that I've, I've done that, but through every storm that you, Jesus went through, every storm he went through, he rebuked the wind and the wave. When you're going through a storm, don't seek out pity, seek out authority. Yeah. And begin taking dominion over that storm in Jesus' name. Chapter 14 says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Yes. I believe there's a glory. Uh, Marshall prophesied it tonight. I believe there's a glory on this region. I believe that it covers the region. I believe it's going to enter into every school, going to enter yes. every business, going to enter every yes. home, going to enter every government. Amen. It's going to be a glory that cannot be contained in one location. That's right. There are 12 wells. They are governmental, apostolic. Each well must be governed, commanded to operate. This is the stewarding of revival. You steward it as we showed you a while ago through prayer, fasting, humility, prophesying, apostolic government. He said there are wells in this state that are in no other. What does that mean? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> to find out what that means, you have to define Florida spiritual. When I began putting this message together a little over a month ago now, I, I text a few people around Florida. I text some of these folks from Leon County. What does Florida look like spiritually to you? I got some good words from all of them. I got some good words from everybody except two people. And I thought these two people was, would give me words of what Florida really is. They gave me words according to what I would refer to as religion. And they began putting down Florida. Rather than saying this is what the Lord says Florida is. Come on. Yeah. So I want to define for you today, you're going to hear some of the words that some of you said. I want to define Florida for you spiritually. These are just one word, no sentences. Here you go. Number one, revival. Number two, forerun. Number three, first fruits. Four, governmental. Five, backbone. Six, apostolic. Seven, healing. Eight well springs. I think that came from Eli. Nine in Ecclesia. Ten victorious. Eleven steadfast. Twelve loving. Thirteen watchmen. Fourteen seer. An eagle. Visionary. Merciful. Leading. Welcoming. Activated. Intercession. Military. Yeah. yeah. Did you know there are 21 military bases in Florida? Yeah. Possibly, I have to look this up, possibly the most of any other state. Somebody might confirm that for me. That's def that defines Florida. That defines Florida. You see, we're here tonight to find the wells, and I believe that we have found them. You'll notice the list that I gave to you. You're number eight, and that number eight right there is a new beginning. Tallahassee's in the number eight. Madison's in the number eight. Monticello, Live Oak, Lake City's in the number eight. See, all of these are new, new beginnings for all these regions and territories. The, the lady who sent me the, the picture while ago of the cassette tape, she's from Monticello. We've been prophesied, we've prophesied 
several months ago over Monticello of the move of God that's on that city. Yes. And how many of you know where Monticello is? Yes. Do you know where it is? There's an awakening that's coming out of that place. Yeah. And I, had, I talked to uh, Cynthia Bryan from Thomasville yesterday and asked her what was going on there because I want to know what the climate is. I want to know who's stewarding that area. Who's stewarding it? This is important. These are, these are strategies I'm sharing with you right now. Who's stewarding Dixie County? You have to ask that question. Not just being, not just pastor of church. Who are the apostles? Who are the intercessors that are stewarding that region, that are commanding an atmosphere over that region and territory? You have to find those things out. There's going to be a move of God in Monticello. I've got to find those who are governing that region. You begin looking, listening. You locate, identify, break open, drink, and release to the nation. All of those. This is your season, your time, not to just have this well for you. It's the season and time for you to begin giving this water to others. Amen. Marshall? Yes. I don't want to blow your head up, but I need to say what I'm going to say. You are an incredible, incredible worship leader. Yes. But you're not called to just this region. Amen. Come on. Amen. The yes. calling is not just to this region. Come on. And here's what I'm seeing right now in the spirit realm. I'm seeing you leading worship gatherings that bring people in for healing from across the state. Amen. Amen. Yes. And I believe that God's going to unlock that for you. Gary, you're going to have to help him. Where's, uh, where's Jane? We've got several Janes. Our, 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 how many? Our Jones, rather. we got Jones. There's Jones there. And we got a, what was it again? Just Jones. Just Jones. Just Jones. This is Jones. She's just Jones. <laughs> so you Jones are going to have to help him. Because this needs to be stewarded within a region. The apostles of the region need to be stewarding beyond their ministry. And this is important. I steward an entire state. I don't steward forerunner ministries. It's just a vehicle for me to operate through. But I could do what I'm doing in Florida if it didn't exist. And so I, I'm not stewarding a ministry, and this is important. I'm stewarding what God has said over a state. And God has spoken some things over Perry, over Taylor County, that have to be stewarded, that have to be, continue to be put yes. into yes. action and focus. Keep the people yes. focused. Yes. Yes. He goes on to say that a nation will, will be overcome by the spiritual force in Florida. And this Taylor County is a part of that force. Yeah. You're a part of that. Your force to be reckoned with. Yes. You're an ecclesia yes. to be released into the earth. Yes. What is not producing or what has not produced will be unblocked. Yes. He prophesied yes. that. Yes. That it's going to be unblocked in your life. It's going to be unblocked in the region. Yeah. Come on. He said there's a new strategy being released. It's a new strategy. I hope that you get to listen to this or take notes or something because I've been releasing strategies all night long. There's a new strategy being released for this region and territory. The greater resource is Yahweh's word. Hey. It's the greater resource. You start taking, I want you to do two things. I want you to take this Bible and start prophesying over your people. <laughs> Amen. Now yes. I want you to take the prophetic word that's been given yes. and start prophesying it over your people. Yes. Yes. I want you to do both of those because yes. it will begin unlocking things over your territory and region. I, I, I've got to tell this story. <clears throat> Some of you were there at the morning fields when we had the meeting back. You missed God, is all I can say. Justin was there, Marshall was there, some others I think were there. Uh, Pastor Eli had just come back from the he was there in and uh, David and Teresa uh, helped coordinate the revival as far as some of the others were there. And uh, but the way we got there was 
I heard a story back in 2004 of a black community back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s who had opened a well of prayer revival in Crawford. And it was called the Morning Fields, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. And the way it happened was a mother would take a sick child out into the field and the Holy Ghost would meet her there and heal the child. George Nelson, who is the last living person that was a part of the morning fields, he was there. 61 years ago, he was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues in the morning fields. I interviewed him probably, I don't know, sometime between 2005 and 2003. And in that interview, he didn't even want to tell me the things that happened because he thought he didn't know who I was. But I interviewed him and started digging it out of him, the gold nuggets of what took place there. And then there was a church down in Sop Choppy. I mean, you know where Sop Choppy is. For those of you that live here, if you go west, you'll notice a beautiful drive over to Sop Choppy. And uh, you have to want to go there to get there. You just don't wind up in Sop Choppy. <laughs> there was a pastor there by the name of Henry Jones, who pastored the Baptist church. And he made the mistake of going to Brownsville. <laughs> yeah, filled with the Holy Ghost, spoke in tongues, come back, and the Baptist decided they didn't want him. And he won a vote in the church, and so they stayed. But the hostilities were so against him in the town that uh, the Lord spoke to him to move. He said, go to the middle of the county, buy property. They buy property in the middle of the county, and they begin laying the foundation. And a man pulls up one day and says, I want to join your church. He says, okay, but it's not even built yet. Why would you want to join this church? He said, this is where my grandma prayed. This is where my mama took me to pray. And they literally did a well of revival in that region of prayer. The moment you step into it, you feel strongly the presence of the Lord. Such a strong impartation that this church down in Sopchop, Ran 150. And that's pretty good for Sop <laughs> I'm going to say this. In Sop Chapel, that's a mega church. <laughs> <laughs> they moved to the morning fields when it was built. Their first service was 750 in attendance. They regularly run 500 every summer. Wow. I spoke there after the conference was over. You see, we have resources in. Florida, we have wells of revival. And these wells of revival is being primed by the river of revelation from the heavens. Sending forth the river of revelation to unlock an entire state. Tonight we're going to unlock Perry, Florida once again. To come into its destiny and purpose. We're going to unlock the resources that God has in this region and territory. I believe that there are going to be people who will, who are going to move here. Why would you move to Perry? Only because you heard the Holy Spirit. They're going to hear the Holy Ghost. They're going to come to this, what seems to be a sleepy little town, but in the atmosphere, there's something that is moving in the atmosphere. Yes. God's going to sit, bring people that aren't even saved. They're coming in to this territory and region. You know, I used to complain somewhat, and there's several things that the Lord has corrected me on. I complained about all the people from coming down from up north and moving to Florida. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit said to me, I brought them here for harvest. Come on. Wow. And then this was, yeah. They're going to get saved. Yeah. And then just a few weeks ago, this is fresh revelation hot off the grill I'm talking about. This is going to set you free. So I'm pulling up to the gas pump. You know how that is. Yeah. I'm ready to complain and blame Brandon. Yeah. And I'm about to open my mouth. And the Holy Ghost says, Don't you have the money? <laughs> <laughs> I quit complaining. 
That's right. I go to the gas pump now and I say, Father, I thank you for the gas. Oh. It doesn't matter if it goes to ten dollars a gallon. I will have the resources. Amen. That's right. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not be lost. He'll make that gas even go a long, lot longer. Instead of getting thirty miles to the gallon, I start getting sixty miles to the gallon. I will just combine the electric car. But that's an old other story. I don't want to get that either. But I believe that God is going to begin moving in this place like never before. Uh, Marsha, come up here. Worship team, come up here. I need the violinist too. Where's the violinist at? My violinist, come on up here. Come on, we're going to crawl up here. Come on. We're going to play with the strong authority. Yes. Moving from a place of playing in timidity to a place of playing play, uh, play in authority. Yes. 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 What's your name? Pasita, I like that. Somebody stand behind Pasita. Father, I bless you and honor you. I worship you. Lord, I bless Pasita right now. I bless Pasita with heaven's authority. And I release right now a new authority upon her. And I say that she will play as one who is on fire. So Lord, we release the fire of the people. We release the authority of heaven right now to you in the name of Yeshua. You will play. You will begin moving in harmony, symphony with those that you play with. The Lord will show you and tell you when to play. And Father, you will do that now. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Oh, God bless you. Come on, let's press in for Perry. Let's press in for this region. You can stand if you want to. You can walk around if you want to. But we're going to take some time right now just to press into prayer for Perry for Probably going to have some of you come up and pray, but when you do, when I bring you up, I just want you to pray. I don't want you to talk. So, Father, tonight we decree a breaking open of the yes. well of yes. revival in Perry, Florida. Yes. Lord, you confirmed it being a well when I crossed the county line, but you confirmed it even more when this lady sent me the picture. God, I decree in Jesus' name, the well of revival, God, in this region has been kicked over in the name of Yeshua. We kick it open in Jesus' name. We say to the well, break up. Break up. Break up. We say that the well of revival, the well of salvation, the well of Spring up, O oh well. Spring up, O 
say to this well of perish. They say it's time for you to bloom. It's time for you to gush again. And we pray now that the revival, fire, begin moving through this region and territory. We decree, Lord, the fire of God in the pulpits of Paris. We say the pulpiteers, Lord, within the region will begin to be consumed with your fire. And those that have been on fire will burn even more, Father. When we call the intercessors out of the place of hope deferred, pastors out of the place of hope deferred, yeah. And we say hope again. Hope again. Hope again. Hope again. Hope again. Hope again.
behavior in motion. We said, Lord God, the chains were turning. And at last, God, the wood was shooting right out the window. Lord God, in the Mississippi, Louisiana, in the fair, the teachers, Lord God, demonstration from this area, Lord God. It's a prototype for heaven and on earth. And God will go well and strike up, Lord God. And even as it was at Hampton Springs many years ago, Lord God, people have been drawn to this region for healing and restoration and deliverance. So, Lord God, let it begin. to revival. It, it, it was lifeless. So we sat down beside Dutch and just began talking and chatting. And then the worship began. Worship was not like this that we had here tonight. It was two retired pastors, a husband and wife, that were leading the worship. And it was totally lifeless. Had no life on it. I, I know the people. I don't think that they're like it, but that's who it was in the dream. But there was no life on it. And just when you thought the worship couldn't get any worse. It did. I've been in some of those places. And pretty soon it was time for the service to shift. And for Dutch to speak. And Dutch walks up to the platform. And there's a wrestling match that takes place between Dutch and and the worship leaders. They didn't want to give him the mic. It was not only a wrestling match spiritually, but also physically. And that the worship leaders would not let go of the mic and Dutch had one hand on it, they had another hand on it. And finally, Dutch prevailed. And 
He put the mic up to his mouth like this, and the moment that he did, the Holy Ghost fell in this place. The whole atmosphere shifted into an atmosphere that was filled with the Holy Ghost. It had been filled with dead, dried religion and somebody who was trying to promote what used to be into a powerful fire of God moving. There were a hundred men there, two from each state and their spouse. Each one of these men fell on the ground prostrate before God. Crying out to the Lord, these men went into travailing prayer for their state and for our nation. It was an unusual sight to see men do this because in my dream, I, I, when, I, when I have the dream, I literally, my, I think in the dream. I don't just sit there and watch it. I'm thinking about things when I'm seeing this dream. And I thought to myself, I've never seen this many men in a prayer meeting before. Oh, I've led prayer movement across Florida since 2003. And one of the things that I always see is the faithful remnant of the ladies showing up. They are there. The gray haired, the dye haired, and me with no hair. And, but they've always been faithful. The thing that has been missing in intercession has been men. And in this dream, these men were on the floor crying, travailing as a woman in childbirth. It wasn't just a normal crime. They were literally crying out, making decrees, groaning. You could feel the, 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 the groaning and even, I guess you would call it spiritual pain maybe, in their gut. You could hear it, you could see it. And then Dutch began identifying which state these men were from. He goes to one state, identifies this man. He comes to Florida. He identifies me. He said, I know this man. This is Ken Malone from Florida. And he starts identifying other people. But here, there was something else there that was so different. The women were not praying. The women, each spouse was standing beside their husband. Daring you to interfere with them. They were watching over and guarding their husband. And in the midst of me watching this dream, I heard the Holy Spirit say this. I am calling my men to earthly prayer and travail. This will be the game changer in America. Tonight I want to issue a call to all you men. It's your turn now. We have, we have worked hard, done what we're supposed to do, but we've given the authority of intercession to the women. And I'm, I'm so grateful for you women. I'm not, not saying you're, you haven't done your part. You have. However, in the Bible, it was not the women who carried the load of intercession. It was men. They carried the load of intercession. All the way from Genesis to Revelation, men were stepping up. When God needed a man, there was a man. When God needed a woman, there was Deborah. But when God needed an Isaiah, when he needed an Ezekiel, when he needed a Paul, they were there. They showed up. I'm calling you men to begin showing up in intercession. I've been asking God to give me in every city we go to men who will begin to meet with no agenda but to bring God into their city. Bring God into their state. Bring God into this yes. country. Yes. God's calling each one of you to a lifestyle of prayer. And so I want to take one last time. We're going to give an invitation in just a moment just for the men to come down. We're going to have some of you pray, not talk. But on August the 19th and 20th, we're doing a meeting in Tallahassee, Pastor Eli's church, Lifeway Church. And it's called, God's Call to Men. We did call it Raw Cry, and the Lord told us to change it to God's Call to Men. And we're calling men from across the, step, from across the nation.
and the state. We have people coming from Texas, people coming from Kentucky, from Georgia, other parts of the nation because this is not just a Florida thing. I will be doing, I've been already been asked to do one of these up in Evansville, Indiana. And so I want to, I want to invite you to come. We're going, we're going to feed you. You're going to enjoy the brisket that will be there on Saturday afternoon. Some of you women want to go now, don't you? But we don't want you to come. We want you to stand beside your husband in intercession from home because we're going to get real before the Lord. And we're going to call upon the men to begin taking their place. I want to invite you men who are hungry to begin to see America change. See, this is not for our agenda. This is for the Lord's agenda. This is not for our church. This is for the Lord's plan for America. Kingdom of God. So men who are, who are ready to abandon themselves. Ready to abandon their ministry. Come on up here. We need you to come on up here. Lord, give us strong men. Give us strong men. You go back and read about what was called the noontime prayer in New York City. Anybody ever heard of the new noontime prayer in New York City? It was led of businessmen. It was right in the middle of the Civil War. And God brought revival to New York City because of these men praying. Uh, Charles Finney had a man called Brother Nash, who was his intercessor. And he would send Brother Nash into a city two weeks before he got there. And Brother Nash would find other intercessors and they would prepare the atmosphere for, the, for God to come. So tonight, Lord, we just, we press into you as men. We say, God, we need you. Lord, we repent tonight. I repent, Lord, for having dropped the ball of intercession. We repent, God, as a one body and ask you, God, in the name of Yeshua to begin moving upon the heart of men across America. Come take your position. Come take your place and your seat of authority in Yeshua's name. Come on, let's pray. Some of you guys who want to pray, raise your hand, wave at me. Yes, Lord. Oh, my God, mighty God. Oh, we're looking for warrior horses tonight. In the book of Job, Lord, you declared warrior horses that ran to the battle for them. We want to run to the battle. We pour up the ground. We pour up the ground. Oh, my God, as a warrior horse, uh oh, we don't run from the fight, Father. We run to the fight. We hear the fight and we're called to it, Lord. Oh, we lather. The lather comes on our side and, and we strive and we pull at the dirt and we. We, we charge the enemy, Lord. Father God, we just come face forward, facing, facing the enemy, Lord, and declaring that men stand as warrior horses. Warrior horses in this time, and time is, it's time. It's time for the men to declare what they've been called to do. Stand against the enemy. Stand against the enemy. Father, that we don't turn back from the fight. And we, we hold forward. We run forward, full force, full force, knowing that you are with us, and we cannot be defeated. We declare this in that mighty name, the name above all names, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name we declare. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just release a breaker anointing, Lord God. Lord God, we release a breaker anointing, Lord God, that you will be people, Lord God. Lord God, that will move into the fullness of what you have. And Lord God, that will break into and see the wells up and up. Lord God, we'll break into, Lord God, and stand, break through the walls that need to come down. We'll break through the barriers, Lord God. Lord, I pray for that anointing, Lord God, to break through, Lord God. Lord God, we break, Lord God, in and see your alabaster jar broken, Lord God, that your presence, Lord God, be poured out, Lord God, and we'll dwell in your presence. Lord God, that we'll break through fear. We'll break through the fear of man. Lord God, that we'll break through, Lord God, those things that hinder, Lord God, and set us aside. Lord God, I pray for a release of a break for anointing, Lord God. Lord God, that we can go to the higher 
your heart for God. You will break into the heavens for God. And feel your presence for God. For God, that we will lean forward for God with a greater anointing to bring change, to bring breakthrough, to make a difference for God, to take the cities for God, to take the land in the name of Jesus. For God, I speak for the least and for everyone, for God. A greater anointing for God. To bring a shift and a change to bring forth the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for the representation that is here in this place. And Father, as your apostle mentioned that word tonight, that word of transition that comes with a transfer of anointing, I declare and decree, Lord, that from this place, these men that you are raising up will move into a new season of an anointing that will bring them into a greater transition of who they are in you. And I speak the identity in every one of these men standing here. Rise up and be the man that God has called you. And ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying tonight. Because tonight is a new thing that I'm doing in your lives and in this region. So Father, we decree and declare that the men of this region, of this city, shall hear the cry of the Father and respond with the power of the Spirit. And we thank you, Father, for the breakthrough in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Yeah, so let's, let's Come on. 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 Father, I thank you that right now there is an answering of a call, a call and a mandate to be priests and kings unto our God, that men would rise up and be priests and kings under their God, the priest and the king and the prophet of their home. Father, I pray that, that the men standing here, that they'd be gripped with a new groan for your word, gripped with a new groan for your presence. God, I pray that they wouldn't go back to bed when they're waking up at four in the morning, God. I pray they wouldn't go back to bed, but that they would press into your presence, God. I pray for sweet whispers of your Holy Spirit, waking them up in the middle of the night, and that they would go into intercession for their families, Lord. God, I pray that selfishness would be done away with, Lord. I pray that, ooh, Lord, I, I, I pray that they, it would not be a, a me-centered ministry as a man over a home, God. I pray that you would all give us, that you would give us all the grace to love our wives as Christ actually loves the church, God. I pray for that, Lord. I pray that you would grip us, God. Grip us with your love. Father, I pray for an even new discipline anointing over our children, God. And I pray, God, right now that any forgiveness, any amends that any of us need to make, Lord, that we would reach out in the name of Jesus, put aside our pride, and do it. For the sake of our community, our city, our family, and our nation. In Jesus' name. Y'all won't come up, I'm going to call on you.
So we thank you, God, that this is a blessed community, a blessed region, and the light rules and reigns here, that Jesus is Lord. We call out today, God, that every man, Lord, that is hunting and fishing and desires to work and be wealthy, we pray, God, that they will hunt for you and fish for you, that they will be wealthy for you, that they will desire you more than they desire anything. Let it be clear in this room tonight with every one of us. God, we pray that we will step up, Lord, and with authority we will proclaim that Jesus is Lord. And that not only Jesus is Lord, but that your kingdom will come in this community, in this region, that your will will be done. Lord, that everything that you desire, everything you designed us for, that we will line up in your word and that we will obey your word. We also speak, Lord, for churches and leaders and community leaders and men and women that are in the kingdom of God, that they will hear your voice, that they will hear you speak, Lord. And God, when we speak, Lord, may we hear you speak and we obey and we do those things that you call us to do, God, that you give us the understanding that we have power and that you have given us the kingdom. You have given us authority. You have given us wisdom and gifts and resources. And may we use those resources, God, that you have given to us. And Lord, we declare that you rule and you reign right here, right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Right here, come on.